Boost Mobile is a really tough budget cell service provider to review. It's owned by Dish Wireless, yes, part of that satellite TV company, and uses T-Mobile and AT&T's cell towers. The actual network connections are pretty good, but everything else about using Boost Mobile is a real pain right from the start. Hi everybody, Fox Nomad here, and today I wanna to help you travel smarter with my review of Boost Mobile, which is a really tough review to do because Boost Mobile has been acquired, merged, and bought by multiple companies multiple times, and it brings a lot of that baggage with it into its mobile service. A brief history of Boost begins as Nextel before being purchased, then merged as Sprint as it was combined with Nextel. Still with me? Well, the latest is that in 2020, Boost was purchased by Dish Wireless after T-Mobile and Sprint merged. Boost Mobile is an MVNO, meaning it doesn't own its own mobile towers, but rather uses a combination of T-Mobile and AT&T's cell towers. If you don't know what an MVNO is, I made an entire video explaining just that. I'll link to right under the subscribe button. And Boost Mobile is a lot like other MVNOs where they want to market budget cell service and no contracts, and they kind of, sort of, do those things, but also at the same time, not quite. Their prices start at $15 a month for 5 gigabytes of data with unlimited talk and text. But like many other MVNOs, Boost offers an unlimited plan for 40% more, a $10 bump up to $25 a month. Note though that that particular offer is for new customers only. And while Boost is technically contractless, they require you to use auto pay so there's no contract, but you will be billed monthly until you cancel. And before we talk about canceling the service, let's talk about starting the service, which is continuing a theme here, a real pain. Signing up to Boost starts out easily enough, but getting an account set up is a hassle. The signup site is very picky about passwords, which is fine, but it doesn't accept many randomly generated ones. Boost also blocks VPN access, so you might have some trouble connecting in the first place. And once you do get into the site, it will force you to reset your password basically every time for, I don't know, reasons? If you're a user with a newer phone, you can get your account set up with an eSIM, but that process is buried in the FAQs, so there is some searching around to do. For Android users, good luck because you've got some manual configuration to set up. And if you finally figure out those Android instructions or find the QR code for iOS, Boost will still mail you out a physical SIM card, even if your phone doesn't have a physical SIM card slot. The reason I bring up all of these issues is because when it comes to MVNOs, all things being equal, like the pricing, it's really all of the other little intangibles, all of the other parts of the service that really differentiate one MVNO from another. Pricing is already competitive among MVNOs, so if you're looking for a budget sell service in the $15 or $30 price range, you'll have no trouble finding that. Looking for contractless service, that's also not uncommon. And that's where things like forced auto pay, a good mobile app, and competent customer service come into play. Those less obvious elements of a mobile service provider are really what distinguish between the good MVNOs and the not so good. And well, Boost just doesn't have a lot going for it in those departments. There's this big hurdle to get signed up, and once you are, managing your account and seeing how much data you've used aren't the easiest. In fact, I was never able to get the mobile app working, which might not seem like a big deal if you've got an unlimited plan, but if you're on a five gigabyte a month plan, keeping tabs on your usage so you don't go over is important. And because logging into the site is so difficult, checking usage there is another burden. Even if you don't have a limited plan, you'll occasionally need to manage your account and accessing your Boost profile is gonna be an aggravating experience for many of you. At this point, if you're still interested in using Boost Mobile after my not-so-glowing review, well, there is a beacon in the middle of all of this, and that's the actual phone service, the talk, text, and data. A lot of this depends on where you are, but the combination of towers Boost uses, which I'm assuming lean a lot on T-Mobile, provide about as good of a coverage as you can find where there are T-Mobile towers in your area. The 5G and LTE speeds were slow at times, hardly 5G-like, but the data connections were solid, even if there seems to be some throttling going on. So there you go, that's a plus. The talk, text, and data is decent when it comes to Boost Mobile, depending on what T-Mobile and AT&T towers happen to be in your area, depending on where you live and where you work, or where you hang out the most, where you're gonna be using your phone the most, the service is decent. 
Now, it's not going to be as fast, so you're not going to get as fast of data speeds as you would with AT&T or T-Mobile by signing up with them directly, but you're also paying less per month with Boost Mobile than you would with AT&T or T-Mobile. And that's just kind of the trade you make with any MVNO. You pay a little bit less for your monthly service with the caveat that you probably will get slowed down when things get busy on the network. So as the network gets busier with AT&T and T-Mobile customers, they're going to deprioritize all the MVNO customers. And unless you're going somewhere crowded or in certain specific situations, like at a concert or at a sporting event, that's not going to be an issue for the most of you. So now that we've gone through the good, let's get back to the not so good, and that's canceling. A pet peeve of mine are MVNOs that require you to call to cancel, which is what Boost Mobile does. To me, one of the benefits of an MVNO is the contractless flexibility to try different services and switch if one doesn't meet your needs. We're in the digital age. I don't want to talk to a human to initiate my phone service or to cancel it. And of course, they set it up this way because it's a hassle, right? I mean, if you can sign up for the phone service without having to call, you should be able to cancel the phone service without having to call. Look, I know I've been pretty rough on Boost Mobile throughout this review, and they do have 8 million customers, so more than twice that of Mint Mobile, RIP. So there are enough people who are happy enough with the service to keep using it. Maybe there's something I'm missing, or I just had a bad set of experiences, but I do know there are other MVNOs out there which offer you a better set of those intangibles, like a good mobile app or true no commitment, great customer service, or the ability to start the service and cancel the service digitally. All of that you can find with other MVNOs, and those are things that Boost is not really offering right now. My advice if you're shopping for budget sell service is to look for an MVNO with a lower barrier of entry, see how it works for you, and then maybe switch to another one if it's not quite what you're looking for. Boost is certainly an option out there, but it's probably not where you want to start your search for budget mobile service. Thanks very much for watching. That's my review of Boost Mobile. Let me know if you have any questions down in the comments below. And while you're down there, hit the like and subscribe buttons. I'll have new videos for you every week and I will see you in the next video.